managers and leaders in the organisation should look at themselves. Everyone, in fact, should look at themselves and manage your own behaviour. I think the research shows that often people aren't aware that they're bullying. They aren't aware of how their actions and behaviours are coming across. Um, so to be, to be made aware of how it makes others feel, yeah, answering emails in a meeting um, or, or not um, saying hi to people on the corridor, you may feel it's insignificant, but it could be being experienced um, as bullying, uncivil behaviour. And then let's look at the organisation. How can you manage the organisation to ensure uh, that this behaviour doesn't happen? And there's obviously um, policies that can be put in place and that's hugely important. Um, that shows, that signals to your employees um, and everyone working there that you do take these matters seriously. They're not tolerated, they will be acted upon and that goes to penalising bad behaviour. Also important to reward good behaviour. If you see you know, collegiate actions that you like in your um, firm, to notice that, to have collegiality on your review form so that it's see, you know, noted by your employees that this is something you as a business and a firm care about. I think one of the most important things is to be aware of it and be aware that it exists and what it looks like in order to be able to address it if it does arise. And so things like the Dignity Matters survey from the Law Society are really important because they highlight what it is and what it looks like today. In terms of dealing with it and addressing it, I think it's really about being professional and being responsible when we come across these issues. And so complaints, when somebody wants to make a complaint, we should deal with that properly and head on. There shouldn't be a concern around repercussions if I make a complaint about something, or there shouldn't be a concern that I'll in some way be thought less of if I make a complaint. And when we make complaints, they should be properly dealt with and addressed. We're in the business of solving problems. We solve problems for our clients all the time. And so we should be willing and prepared to do that for each other as well. So there's a great quote, actually, when it comes to items like dignity in the workplace. And it's, when those around you are dedicated to ethical conduct, that's contagious. And so is the reverse. And I think that quote really captures the effect that we have as individuals on the organisation that we work in. When people see negative behaviours being rewarded, somebody gets promoted, or negative behaviours being overlooked, it becomes acceptable, and it becomes something that that younger person is going to try and imitate and work towards because they see it being rewarded, or they see it being overlooked. When we treat complaints the same, and we treat the people involved the same, and that, that consistency is there, it makes it a, a safe environment to deal with those issues. How do we create a culture of respect? I think that uh, that question really, I suppose, demands and, and requires us to start thinking about how do we define uh, and how do firms define and talk about and agree that in this firm and in this place of work, uh, what do we say respect is? So I think it's really important that firms begin to, and not just begin to, do dialogue and define for themselves, for themselves, what respect is. And then really communicate that to the firm, that this is what we have decided. These are the behaviours, the principles, um, this is what we're going to live to. And that is communicated by the leaders, by senior leaders, to every level in a firm, including everybody, that this is what we stand for. Uh, and also this is what we expect, when we have to find it, communicate it, and then live it. And if there are um, behaviours or experiences that aren't, that they are held to account. There needs to be, um, you know, methods and, and points of access which are safe and within which people can really voice their experience and the experience is acknowledged and listened to. What's going to be really important is that leadership take ownership of a concept which is no tolerance at all of sexual violence. That's going to be really important. From that will flow training, um, awareness raising, um, meetings with managers, helping people to update harassment, no harassment policies. All of that flows from a leadership saying we want to be a company, an environment where sexual harassment does not exist.